Can you box frame your prints? If you're a printmaker, you exhibit your prints at exhibitions or around your house, you tend to frame your prints in a picture frame behind glass or acrylic um, mounted, and I do it as well. Um, they look great, obviously, but I thought I want to do something different. I want to present my prints in a different way. Is there another way? I do a lot of painting and I box frame my paintings and they look really beautiful. Um, so I wondered, can I box frame my prints? Well, you need to put them behind glass. But then I thought, hang on a minute. What if I treat my prints like I treat my paintings? What if I glaze my prints? Who says I can't do it? What if I just glaze them with acrylic medium and put them on a panel and put them in a box frame? So I did it and I filmed it and I wanted to show it to you because I think it's just an alternative way of displaying your prints and protecting them. It doesn't damage them. I did it. You can see it with your own eyes. Nothing happened to my print and it looks great. In fact, this is the result. As you can see, you can still see textures from the intaglio print. Um, and um, I made this frame myself. And I will show you in this video how I glazed the print, how I put it onto a box panel and how I created a frame and then dropped the box panel into a box frame. Hope you enjoy the video. So before I dive in, I'll just showing you that uh, there is, so you believe me, this actually is a print, it's not a painting. There is another version of it framed as you normally frame them. And here is my second version in a box frame. I cut the print up. It's not the full version. As you can see, it's different size. But yeah, for comparison, you can see um, they two slightly different prints, but uh, basically are framed in a different way. So before I attach the print to a box panel, I need to protect it with gloss medium, acrylic gloss medium. Um, so just uh, you have to just make sure that the print is very dry. This has been printed several weeks ago. It is absolutely 100% dry. Um, obviously you have to do that so that your ink doesn't smudge everywhere. But <clears throat> I don't use a brush here, I use a colour shaper and that's mainly because I don't want to um, see any brush strokes. So I want it to be completely smooth. I do this twice. So I wait for the first coat to dry and then I apply the second coat. So now that my print has got two coats of gloss medium, I can think about my, um, attaching it to my box panel. So it's the box panel, as you can see, is quite small. The print is a lot bigger, but I'm OK with it. I'm OK with cutting in. As you can see, I've got a frame here that um, I'm quite happy with the composition. In fact, I think in some ways it can it, it actually improves it. So I'm happy to get rid of all the stuff around it. Um, so I'm going to mark it with a pencil. I'm going to cut out, first of all, um, I'm going to cut out um, a bigger, uh, obviously, picture than the actual frame, um, the box panel, because um, when I glue it, I will cut around it um, very accurately to make sure it is 100% um, the same size, size as box panel. So I will cut it out a little bit bigger than my box panel here. Metal ruler is probably the best and a really sharp blade uh, with your Stanley knife or whatever cutting knife you use. Um, metal ruler, because the, the knife can be very sharp, obviously metal ruler is a good idea because otherwise you will cut into your plastic ruler. Uh, so I would advise to use metal one. So after the initial cut, I will still do some more cutting just to make it a little bit smaller and easier to deal with. 
but I just want to make sure 100% that I have the right bit of the picture. Um, so that's why I made a bigger one and so I can put the box panel against it and just make sure I've got the right bit of composition there that I want to capture. I'm going to attach the print to the panel just using gloss medium again. I prefer using it than glues because it's an art material so it's designed uh, not to damage um, so I'm not worried about uh, its chemical properties so I'm just using using that maybe an expensive way of doing it but uh, it's safe so again just I think it's important to use quite generous amount maybe even put the gloss media on both panel and the print uh, here I just put it on one it's quite a small surface area so I think I can I can manage it well well we don't want any bubbles to to appear um, there will be a bit of leaking going on but um, that can always be wiped away later on. Um, so from my experience, I have mounted things on um, on box panels before. You you can get those really annoying bubbles. So it's very, very important to get it fixed and make sure there is no air pockets inside. Um, so I get it... Um, sort of pressed down um, for quite a long time and I keep checking it and keep squeezing if I see an air bubble come up. It's good to use greaseproof paper so you don't leave any finger marks on the artwork. So I'm just turning it around because I'm going to wipe away any excess glue from the edges. I want this to be super clean and neat because these areas might be a little bit visible once it's in a box frame, so I want them to be 100% right. I've got really handy two 5 kilo weights that I'm just going to put down on top. And I will keep checking now and then if any air bubbles come up or any excess glue sort of sticks out because I want it to be 100% smooth. I have waited uh, for the glue to dry. I would give it at least one hour. The longer the better. Um, sorry, it's not glue, it's acrylic medium. Um, and now I'm going to cut the rest. I want it to be perfect. So I've got my blade really sharp. I'm using ruler as well as the frame. And I'm hoping to get it all in one, not always possible obviously because you have to apply the pressure. But as you can see this is absolutely perfect, this is what I want, beautiful. So I've sped the video up because uh, obviously it will take quite a long time to do all four corners. Um, but um, yeah, practice makes perfect. I've done it a few times. It, it's quite fiddly and tricky to do, but uh, it's well worth the effort. The next thing we need to do is uh, use steel wall pads to take the shine off um, the artwork because the gloss media makes it really shiny um, just gently rubbing with these th this steel wool will take the shine off before we put the wax cold wax medium on okay so you can use any brand I, I use this one because it smells uh, lovely and citrusy and um, I've just got this cloth especially for doing this job and um, just apply a gently a layer of cold wax medium and um, then what you do is you wait for it to dry and then you just sort of buff it with a dry cloth um, and what it does is instead of having this really shiny glossy acrylic gloss, gloss sort of texture it will have a more leathery type of nicer um, finish.
I also give the sides a, a waxy finish to just put a bit of this cold wax medium on the sides as well. Um, just, I don't know, just so it has a, some smoother finish. Right, so once the um, cold wax media has settled a little bit, I'm just giving it a bit of a buff. Um, it, I just waited for an hour or so. Um, it settles very quickly, so you don't need to wait long. But yeah, it will. Um, it just gives it that really lovely finish. So I'm just going to put it to the light so you can see. It's not sort of glaringly glossy. It's just got that um, lovely texture. And it's really nice to touch as well. So I've got a moulding which is great for box framing. Um, it's just got the right sort of rebate. And... I will. I've got. I bought it online from Lion um, Frame Suppliers. Um, I've got. I think they come in sort of meter long um, sizes. So um, I'm just going to basically cut four pieces, which all will be exactly the same because it's square. And if I measure it out. Uh, the box frame is 20 by 20 centimeters but I want about half a centimeter um, on each side um, to to have a gap basically so I'm gonna measure out the frame to be 21 centimeters so the box is 20 and I'm gonna measure out the frame to be 21 So I've got this uh, Stanley Mitre saw, uh, which is really handy. It's quite simple. Um, it's got these handy little screws that hold it up in place so I can um, slide in my moulding. And basically what I need is I need to get the right um, angle. Uh, so I've got to cut this bit at the end um, so I can have the right... Um, it's pointing in the right direction so I need to just cut it off. Here at the end. Okay, so this bit can be a little bit confusing. Um, where do you measure 21 centimeters from what point to what point? Uh, but basically, I'm just aligning it uh, to the edge uh, of that angle, and that's where that 21 centimeters is supposed to be two from that edge to the to the um to the other edge and that's where i'll be cutting but obviously cutting the other side pointing in the other direction so i'm just getting my um ruler out and as you can see i'm just measuring 21 centimeters from that very edge and i'm going to mark it with the pencil and that's where I will be cutting. Obviously, I need to readjust my mitre saw and pointing in the opposite direction. Okay, so now I've got my moulding placed. Just got to be careful I get it just right on the line. It has to be just perfect. That's why these little screws which hold it in place are so handy. Okay, so you can see my piece and basically I have to make four exactly the same pieces. So um, I don't really need to do much measuring anymore. Um, I just make sure I have to make exactly the same four pieces. So I'm just going to move my mitre saw to the opposite angle again uh, because I'll have to get um, um, the bit that, that I have left over is pointing the wrong direction so I need to cut the bent, the end off um, which is really annoying because you end up with all these um, wasted ends um, but that's just the way it goes all right so now that my piece is pointing the right direction all I have to do is just measure it up against the other piece uh, mark it with the pencil and cut it so it's exactly the same and 
all I have to do is do it four times. It's really satisfying having all the pieces done and rearranging them on the surface to see the whole frame because um, it takes so much time obviously to cut the pieces. And this is uh, um, the moment where we, we will see if there is any problems but it looks like the gap is pretty good. So before I glue all the pieces I will have to sand down this because of the cutting with the mitre saw has created some sort of jaggedy edges and imperfections I have to smooth it all out before I glue it together and I'm using this um, special um, kind of ruler um, which is really helpful for that reason and um, I will have to do it to all the edges just to make sure that it's a really good glueable surface. And this is just your standard uh, wood glue. And what I do is I um, put the wood glue on two opposite sides and just with like a cotton bud, you could do it with a paintbrush. I don't like wasting paintbrush on it. And um, once I've got the glue on the two pieces, I use just a masking tape uh, you can glue them together by sort of standing them on a, on its side or just lying them down. Um, so first of all you glue, you um, put the tape around uh, on the edge like so and you kind of more or less get the frame fitted together but then you have to strengthen it and also put the masking tape or uh, across like that on on both on, on both sides and that really secures the frame and makes it all tight together to in order to be glued um, that works surprisingly well actually uh, masking tape is the perfect thing to use because it's strong but also you can peel it off easily later on um, so yeah it's, it's ideal for this sort of job you can see it's still a little bit flexible, uh, just um, securing it a bit more. Might have to add another tape on the other side uh, because of the movement we get still. Um, yeah, once that's done, we'll be ready. We will have to use some 25 millimeter nails um, just to um, secure it even more. Glue is not going to be enough. So we'll have to wait for the glue to set for at least an hour or so. Obviously the longer the better. Um, and after it's dried we, we use the 25 millimeter screws and what I do is I put two screws, sorry, nails uh, on one side of the frame and on the other side I put one nail so on the opposite side there'll be two and the opposite and the other opposite sides will be one because um, obviously otherwise the nails will interfere with each other and that um, the nails can be pushed in a little bit further so we can mask them with some wood glue sorry with um, some wood filler um, and I use just a hammer and um, screwdriver to do that just to push them in them just a tiny little bit more into the frame so we can cover them up later on perfect so after it's all dried uh secured we can take the masking tape off and see if it all fits and it does it's amazing um it worked really well i'm so glad that it did um and the last thing is obviously we will always have some kind of imperfections on the edges especially and obviously over the nails and uh, that's what the wood filler is for. I, um, it works really, really well at covering all those imperfections. So um, that dries pretty quickly as well. And when, once it's all dried and smoothed, it, the whole thing can be sanded down. And I love the sanding down process because you sort of really refine your... Here you can see I'm covering up the nail heads here. Um, and you really can't see them once you finish the frame. It's amazing uh, what you can do with wood filler. 
So this is the sanding process, uh, which is fun. I've got this sort of special, uh, it's coarse, quite coarse sandpaper, but obviously don't over sand, don't over, be careful you don't over sand the edges or you'll end up with smooth edge. So um, I have this special sort of cork flat um, block, which I use for sanding. And of course you should be wearing a mask while you're sanding. It's, it's important not to breathe it in. So I need to decide what colour my frame is going to be. So I did a poll online and most people went for number one. So uh, I'm going to go for that colour. I've got some um, paint samples from DIY shop, which I use first of all to try to find the colour. Um, but after mixing it, obviously it didn't quite match. I tried to match the colour to what I've got already in the artwork uh, by mixing up some acrylics with some of those sample pots I managed to get uh, more or less the colour that I was looking for. So um, after giving it a couple of coats, um, once I'm satisfied that the paint job is good enough, um, I will wait for it to dry do the last fitting i'm happy with the color of w w how it how it ended up being and I, I use a bit of beeswax i know most people say beeswax should be used on a uh, bare wood but um i just love using beeswax on on here because it gives me uh that nice smooth finish to touch so um i i polish it afterwards after it dries as well um so now I need to put the box frame into the frame. So I've got this double sticky tape, which I bought from a framing shop. It's super, super tough. So I don't want to use any nails. I don't want to, don't want to bag any in. I'm just, just going to use this tape. As you can see, I've got some hair stuck in it. Um, doesn't want to let go. So I add them to the box um, panel first and I've got these little spaces on all four sides because once it sticks it's really hard to move it so I want to get it in the right place in the first place uh, a bit of a nerve-wracking moment to be honest but um, and it shifts as you can see it moves a little bit ah very scary but it was fine in the end um, it still had a bit of a wiggle move before it got stuck down and then I just pushed it in and once pushed in, you really can't move it. It's so solid. And obviously not forgetting the hooks at the end, nice and loose, sort of third of the way up. Um, and it's done, it's finished. I really like the color. I might have gone for the brighter color, but most people seem to like the dark frame, so why not? I really hope you've enjoyed the video and um, if you have any questions, please let me know all the materials and all the um, timeline, everything is in the description. There's also a link in the description to the video where I've made the actual print, if you want to see, if you're curious to see that as well. Uh, thank you so much for your support and for watching. And today I've hit 6,000 subscribers, so it's been a real milestone for my channel. Thanks to you guys. Um, hopefully see you at my next video.